After oh, well, more than four months of long and fiery battles in Parliament, peers voting five times to scupper the plan, last night the House of Lords finally gave in to the will of elected MPs in the Commons and the government's flagship Rwanda bill will now finally become law. Well, after King Charles gives it as his assent. Rishi Sunak said this morning that nothing would stand in the way of getting flights off to Rwanda. <laughs> oh, famous last words, Prime Minister. Uh, joining me right now is co-deputy leader of Reform UK, Ben Habib. Good morning to you, Ben. Good morning, Julia. OK, a question I ask an awful lot of people. Um, do you think these flights will ever get off the ground, even one of them? And will it have any impact whatsoever on deterring people from getting on dinghies in Calais? Well, I'll take the second question first, if I may. I think it's easier to answer, which is that it, it won't, in my opinion. Any number of people being deported to Rwanda will have zero impact on the number of people crossing the channel because... Um, well, first of all, we've got to remind ourselves what the Rwanda bill is. It um, will only deport uh, single men to... The, the Rwanda Treaty, sorry, it'll only deport single men to Rwanda. So if you're a would-be people smuggler and you want to get round the legislation, well, the easiest way to do it is to pivot towards women and children yep. coming across the channel. It also makes it much more difficult for the UK government optically to take, uh, you know, strong legal action if it's women and children coming across the channel that's the first thing and then of course as we all now know there's a limit to how many people rwanda can take i think it's about four thousand at full tilt yeah. which but, means but only that a few hundred you've this got year a, and only a few hundred this year which means that you've got a 95 percent plus chance of making it through the court system and not being deported to rwanda and given all the trials and tribulations which you were prepared to take and risk on your way to the channel, why does anyone think that that would act as a deterrent? So I think this has been one hugely expensive legislative international treaty exercise, which is going to fail whether or not flights take off. Is there, the is there a principle? Yeah. Is there a principle involved, though, that, you know, the government should be able to get this through past the courts, past the House of Lords, past the European Court, if necessary, that the British government, democratically elected, whether people like it or not, with a majority, should be able to pass these sorts of laws? Is that an important principle to establish? So that's the more interesting question. It doesn't deal with the illegal migration problem, but it's a really interesting question because it goes to the heart of many things uh, in, in this country at the moment, including the reluctance of the government to give effect to a proper Brexit, which is that we seem to have defeated domestic, our ability domestically to pass laws and, and, and make policies for the United Kingdom that are good for the United Kingdom. We seem to wish to take the knee and are prepared to take the knee to international institutions at every opportunity. And what this bill, uh, this now act, um, or will be an act shortly, seeks to do is to say to the courts, you cannot not deport someone to Rwanda just because it's Rwanda. And the only, <clears throat> the only uh, individual in this country who can take note of an ECHR ruling as far as Rwanda is concerned is a government minister. And then, it, then the government minister can decide whether or not these interim rulings are given any effect. But, you know, the proof of the pudding is going to be in the eating. And It'll be interesting to see whether government minister, secretary of state, in this case, James Cleverly, will have the courage to ignore an ECHR ruling, given that so many Conservative Party MPs are pro-membership of the ECHR. That, that and, said, saying, other, uh, other yeah. European countries who are signatory to the European Convention and members of the European Court quite happily ignore European Court rulings all the time. France, Italy, um, Greece, Spain, all yeah. the time, routinely. But we've done something which is daft as brushes. Tony Blair elevated in our own domestic law the European Court of Human Rights to a superior position over the Supreme Court. So unlike France and these other countries, actually the ECA, the European Court of Human Rights, has a judicial impact directly on the, uh, uh, you know, on the judicial system of the United Kingdom. If you don't like what the Supreme Court rules, you can appeal to the European Court of Human Rights. These other countries don't have uh, that obligation for the, for the European Court's uh, rulings to be adhered to. We've taken that on completely in the UK, which we so often do. You know, uh, a convention is passed, 
a treaty is entered into and we gold plate it and adhere to it to our own great detriment if necessary, whereas other people take a more practical approach to life. Okay. But the other thing that's really interesting, um, uh, Julia, which came out you know, in, in the Act, is that Parliament felt it necessary in the Act to assert its own sovereignty. There's a provision in the Act which says Parliament is sovereign and supreme. And it's an extraordinary state of affairs that Parliament should feel the need to assert its sovereignty. We've got to a point now where international law has been used by past prime ministers to defeat the ability for successive parliaments to yeah. pass laws that we've the parliament feels the need now to actually declare well, itself but, but sovereign. Is, but that is no, but Ben, isn't this about the whole idea that, you know, Parliament doesn't really trust itself. The, the, the great and the good, the establishment exactly. of this country don't really think much of voters. We, got, we get things wrong on things like Brexit and we support things like the Rwanda Bill and people, I don't know, do horrible things like flying St. George, the, the, the St. George's Cross it's, on St. It's George's It's all part of the same thing. We're just, we're just bad people and, we, and they, need, they need, to make, make, need to be in charge. What's the Reform UK policy? If you guys, I mean, look, you know, we've got local elections coming up, we've got general election later in the year... You say you're standing a load of candidates, you won't do a deal with the Tories. Just, I mean, who knows what happens in elections these days? Let's just say you end up in charge uh, at the end of the year. Um, a little smile on your face in reaction to that. <laughs> Unlikely, let's be honest, but if you just think, what would Reform UK do to deal with this issue? With, with illegal migrants? Yeah. Well, the, the, you know, you don't stop the boats by deporting people. The way to stop the boats is to physically stop the boats. The reason border force is called border force is because they're meant to use force at the border. We've forgotten what border control means. When, even when Rishi Sunak talks about stopping these boats, he does it in the context of being nice to the people who are crossing no, the channel. OK, but how do you stop them? How, what, what are you going to do? You're just going to stop them in the middle of the channel and just, you know, what, take them back to Calais? You what do, are you going to do? You, 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 you establish a force that's well-trained and well-equipped yeah. and capable and of then... intercepting these dinghies and you stop them enter or entering our territorial water and, then... and you require them to turn round. You require and if them they to turn round. They go, we're you... not going to turn round, we're just going to keep and going. And you have a standoff, you have a standoff in the channel. And, and then, and then, okay. you have to use and then, force. And then, and then all the migrants then jump into force. the water. What do you do then? And... And and it and you might you might this is one idea provide them with another dinghy in order to climb back in and, and then go they back say to we're going to keep going to England. What do you do? And then, then? You, you 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 use force again. And use I'm force afraid. Again. So at what, some point, so at some point, you, you know, the Royal Navy or any other body about the border force, they're going to have to pick these people out of the water or off a dinghy that's not what seaworthy. Okay. At that point, what do they do with them? Do they Julia, take them the, back to France or not? What do they do with them? The the presumption in your in your question, is that we have a duty of care to people who are seeking to enter our country We have country a duty illegally. of care to people drowning in the channel, yes. Well, we, we, we only, do. by the way, under international law, Article 98 of the UN Convention of Law of the Sea, we only have an obligation to save people if it's reasonable to do so. And under the same international law, we have the right to turn people back who are seeking to enter our I understand her. Illegally. I love it, turning and people so, back. At the point when they yeah. refuse to be turned back or they just someone, someone just puts a, a, a knife into the dinghy and it starts deflating or they jump in the water because they've been told that's what you do and then you'll be picked up. You know as well as I do, anybody who has ever been on a boat will know that the rules of the sea are very clear. You have to save life where you can save life. And that is what... The Only if it's reasonable to do. do so. But it will be reasonable to do uh, so because there'll be people no, drowning. I don't think it's... I don't think it's reasonable. Are you genuinely you saying a... the Reform no, UK Julia, policy is we will if... let people drown to make a point? Because if... I think that's what you're saying. No, there. Julia, if someone comes... Don't, let's not infantilise these people. They have free will. They yeah. were safe in France. They paid good money to get on a boat seeking illegally to come. So I'm not going to infantilise them and I'm not going to be held to ransom by their claim that they deserve protection as soon as I, they I get into I agree with all of that. Waters. At the okay, point so when that, they use the tactic yeah. of jumping into the yeah. sea and they're drowning, are you saying that British Border Force and the British Navy will be instructed not to rescue those people from no, drowning? No, you didn't hear me. I said that we could, as an idea, provide them with another dinghy into which to climb and then go back to France. And if they choose to scupper that dinghy, then yes, they have to suffer the consequences of then their actions. Then you would leave them to drown. They cannot... They, absolutely, they cannot be... 
infantilized to the point I, that I have we no doubt, Ben, that that is a policy that would work quite well. However, that is not a policy that a civilized country should endorse. Why is that uncivilized, Julia? Explain because we to don't me why. leave people to drown. Because we're civilized what? human beings. So I don't want Julia, these people what? here. I don't think they should be infantilized either. But I would never, I wouldn't leave someone to drown. No, I wouldn't. But you and are, I don't you, think you there's are... anyone in Border Force or the Royal Navy who would do that. Well, I'm afraid border force means using force at the border. If we're not prepared to use force at the border, we will have open borders. And the, I'm, I'm, the presumption of your question goes to the heart of the problem in the United Kingdom. We don't protect our borders because we don't have the political will or courage I, to do so. I agree with but you on that. Border control is a physical process. It's not a legal one. We have to collect hijacked. them from the water and then remove them back to France, whether the French like it or well, not. Can, that could understand that as a policy. You can have five dinghies and they can go... They, or you give them a boat which they can't splash again. Or you give them lifesavers and you tell them to swim back into... Whatever. You can have any number of options to deal with the problem. What you don't do is give in to the blackmail, effectively, of we okay. are here, we're going to self-harm ourselves unless you take us to British shores. OK. You don't I'm... give in to that. Ben, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm genuinely, I'm, I, I don't, I mean, as much as I want this issue solved, I couldn't ever sign up to that, and I don't think most civilized people could. I right. really don't. No matter. Well, what, I don't think it's uncivilized. Civilized. I think it's a okay. matter of border enforcement. Right, Ben, we're gonna have to leave it there. Ben Habib, I very much yeah. appreciate you joining me. Thank you.